Hey Cavs fans, John Rutter here with your Cavs Insider Game Day Report. The Cavaliers looking to keep their perfect home record intact as they host the New York Knicks tonight at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. At 4-1 and one this year, the Cavaliers are off to their best five-game start since the 2016-2017 season. The Cavs, of course, coming off that big overtime victory over the Boston Celtics on Friday night, 132-123. to and they have a much-anticipated rematch with the Celtics right around the corner on Wednesday night at the Fieldhouse. New York arrives at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse 3-2 and two on the season, looking for their first road win of the year. Most recently, they dropped a 119-108 decision to the Milwaukee Bucks on Friday night. Sunday evening is the first matchup of the season between the Cavs and the Knicks. The Cavs taking all three games between the two squads last year. Well, the Cavalier offense features a dynamic backcourt, but it's not the same dynamic backcourt that we all anticipated as the season or as we uh, led up to the season. Karis LeVert sliding into the number two role as Donovan Mitchell has assumed the primary ball handling responsibilities in the absence of Darius Garland. The pair racking up 82 points, scoring 41 each as the Cavs battled back from 15 points down to force overtime and to knock off the Celtics on a Friday night. Lavert was absolutely brilliant. He's been asked to fill a variety of roles during his time this year in the uh, Cavalier lineup. And uh, Friday against the Celtics was Lavert's finest night in the wine and gold. He has recommitted himself to fitness in the offseason, and it showed Lavert scoring 11 points in overtime as the Cavs were able to put the Celtics away. Miller and Lavert joining LeBron James and Kyrie Irving as the second Cavalier teammates in franchise history to each score 40-plus points in a game during the regular season or the playoffs. James and Irving, of course, doing it in the 2016 NBA Finals Game 5 of that season. The Cavaliers come into Sunday night as one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league and one of the best defensive teams in the league. The Cavs lead the NBA in three-point shooting percentage at 41% so far this season. It is Cleveland's best five-game start when it comes to three-point shooting percentage uh, since 2011-2012 when the team came out shooting 42% from three through their first five games. The Cavs have four players shooting 40% or better from three-point land, that being Dean Wade, Karis LeVert, Jetty Osmond, and Donovan Mitchell. Kevin Love just behind them is shooting 39% from deep. Meanwhile, the Knicks come in 25th in the NBA in three-point shooting efficiency. The Cavaliers, we touched on it in their defense, only allowing 100 points per 100 possessions, ranking second in the NBA in defensive efficiency. Well, now is about the time that we will take our annual Darius Garland chat. We will give you an update. And the update is that there really is no update on DG. He did practice on Saturday ahead of the matchup with the Knicks on Sunday evening. The head coach, J.B. Bickerstaff, saying that Garland did not take any contact during that practice. And he was officially listed as out as of Saturday evening on the team's official injury report. Uh, still battling the lingering effects from the lacerated eyelid that Garland suffered in the season opening loss to the Raptors. He has been a visible presence on the team bench during the uh, recent home games and has been uh, seen wearing protective eyewear near the bench. He was also present at practice on Saturday, although he did not appear to be wearing anything on his eyes in the brief portion that the media was able to be there and watch. So the Cavs continuing to proceed with caution with their all-star point guard, clearly in no rush to get him back. It does look like he will miss his fifth straight game with that lacerated eye. Uh, Bickerstaff saying that he wants to make sure that Garland is comfortable with whatever protective eyewear that he is going to have to wear and to get some reps in wearing that and ensure that he is able to see and receive passes clearly with that eyewear. Also, we touched on the revamped starting lineup featuring Karis LeVert at the two. It is the second straight game that the Cavaliers have gone with a bit of a reshuffled starting five with Garland on the shelf. Uh, the Cavaliers going with a starting lineup of Mitchell, LeVert, Dean Wade, Evan Mobley, and Jarrett Allen for the last two games. Isaac Okoro has struggled to find any consistency on the offensive end of the floor. And at one point on Friday night had more fouls than minutes played in the first quarter against the Celtics. Okoro's minutes have fallen off a cliff recently, going uh, from 26 in the second game of the season against the Chicago Bulls to just five 
on Friday night against the Celtics. He scored just two points again on Friday night. He has eight total points in five games this year. Wade canned three of four triples in his first start of the season against the Orlando Magic, getting 12 points. He has been the sol- been solid on the defensive end and provided that catch-and-shoot threat that the Cavs were hoping to get from Okoro. Uh, Wade supplying that offense from the perimeter. Sunday evening between the Cavs and the Knicks, we will update you from the Fieldhouse with the latest comments as J.B. Bickerstaff addresses the media. Tip-off for that one is set for 6 p.m. We will update you with what we hear from the Fieldhouse and provide you with complete coverage all evening long. Cavs and Knicks, it is game number six as the Cavs look to run their win streak to five games. For the Cavs Insider Podcast, I'm John Rudder.